In a matter of just seconds, one of the last big pieces of the Delta IV rocket era disappeared from sight on Florida's space coast. On the morning of June 12th at 10 a.m. Eastern Time, SpaceX, in cooperation with Space Launch Delta 45, demolished United Launch Alliance's mobile service tower, umbilical tower, and lightning protection towers at Space Launch Complex 37. Shout out to the Space Launch Delta 45 and SpaceX for the clean and precision demolition operation. SpaceX Vice President of Launch Kiko Donchev wrote on X, Cheers to the future. That future is one with SpaceX at the helm of this historic launch site at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station, and one with two Starship Towers as well. Back in February 2024, the Department of the Air Force issued a notice of intent that it would be preparing an assessment of SpaceX's request to take over the lease of Slick 37 in order to support 76 launches and landings of its fully integrated Starship rocket annually. That was prepared with the cooperation of the Federal Aviation Administration, NASA, and the U.S. Coast Guard. The notice was followed up by a series of public scoping meetings in March, both in person along the Space Coast and virtually. So the important part about this is a little bit of everything from everyone. All comments matter here. So what we're looking for is people that work here, people that come and visit. We're looking for people that are going to be impacted this in any way. So any of those comments will help develop and draft a final environmental impact statement for the whole block. After the meetings and receiving public comments, the Air Force published its draft environmental impact statement in early June 2025. As proposed, SpaceX would be allowed to redevelop Slick 37 in order to support Starship launches, which are currently confined to Starbase in Texas. That would include two launch towers and all of the needed ground infrastructure to support a future version of Starship, which the document said would see a 35 Raptor engine super heavy booster and a nine Raptor engine ship upper stage. SpaceX founder Elon Musk spoke about the upgraded Block 3 version of Starship during a company talk published to his social media site, X. You can see this is uh, kind of where things are on the left, where things will be uh, end of this year in the middle. And as I was saying, kind of where things will be probably long term. Um, <laughs> yeah. 142 meters. So, but the, the one in the middle is, is full, will be fully capable of, of doing Mars. Uh, and uh, thereafter, we'll, it'll be a lot of uh, performance improvements. Inevitably, the Starship stack will have 42 engines. During the March 2024 public scoping, Captain Braxton Williams, who was serving as the public affairs officer for Space Launch Delta 45 at the time, noted that even when the Air Force concludes its work, and if it grants SpaceX the go-ahead, it's not a quick process to get to the first Starship launch from Cape Canaveral. So there's a few steps in that process as far as developing infrastructure goes. And that timeline right now isn't truly finalized. So it could be anywhere from you know a few months to a few years to really get everything developed as far as all infrastructure required on our end of the military and the end of SpaceX. According to the draft environmental impact statement, SpaceX envisions the first launch taking place in 2026. As part of a pair of leases, it would assume, SpaceX would also make a number of road improvements to widen the pathways to the pad for the 9-meter diameter Starship and Super Heavy booster. Ahead of the eighth launch of the integrated Starship rocket from Starbase, Texas in early March 2025, SpaceX announced that it would be building what it calls a Gigabay next to the Hangar X site of the Kennedy Space Center. The structure would support the processing and refurbishment of the ships and Super Heavy boosters. It would be 380 feet or about 116 meters in height and would have roughly 46.5 million cubic feet of interior processing space along with 815,000 square feet of workspace. SpaceX says it hopes to have this operational by the end of 2026. In that early March update, SpaceX also noted that it was granted a limited right of entry at Slick 37, quote, in support of conducting further due diligence of the site in order to move forward with the environmental impact study. That early access paved the way for the June 12th demolition of what was ULA's Delta IV launch infrastructure. However, this is hardly the first time that massive change has come to this site. Construction of Saturn Launch Complex 37 continued at Cape Canaveral during this report period. The origins of Slick 37 go back to the mid-20th century and the Apollo-era Saturn rocket program. In the early days, the launch complex was envisioned to contain two pads, 37A and 37B. However, only the latter was ultimately built when construction began in 1962. 
A domed Launch Control Center blockhouse was also created to support the launches of Saturn 1 and Saturn 1B rockets. A total of seven Saturn I rockets and two Saturn I-B rockets lifted off from 1964 to 1968, culminating in the first uncrewed orbital launch of the lunar module during Apollo 5. Because of the combined success of both launch vehicle and lunar module hardware, the backup mission of AS-206 LM-2 has been canceled. The site was then mothballed in the 1970s when NASA moved to the Kennedy Space Center. It would lay dormant until 2001 when United Launch Alliance stepped in to build out the site for its Delta IV rockets. The first Delta IV medium rocket launched from Slick 37 on November 20, 2002, carrying the UTELSAT W-5 satellite. The first launch of a Delta IV heavy rocket from the site came on December 21st of 2004. The final Delta IV medium rocket would fly on August 22, 2019, followed by the last Delta IV heavy rocket on April 9, 2024. During a pre-launch media event for the final Delta IV heavy mission, Brigadier General Kristen Panzenhagen, the Program Executive Officer for Assured Access to Space and the Commander of Space Launch Delta 45, was asked about the future of Slick 37 once ULA's time with it came to an end. Immediately following the flight, the lease is still with ULA, so you know they, they still have things there. Um, but we have entered the environmental impact statement process, so SAFIE is leading that from the Pentagon. Um, nominally, that's about a two-year process, so we won't make any decisions on the future of Slick 37 until we understand what any potential environmental impacts would be. ULA's future lies with its Vulcan rocket, which currently launches from Space Launch Complex 41 at the Cape. The company is also transforming Slick 6 out at Vandenberg from an Atlas V configuration to support Vulcan as well. ULA President and CEO Tori Bruno spoke about the transition from the Delta IV family of rockets during the pre-launch news conference. Bittersweet moment for us, you know, this is such an amazing piece of technology, you know, 23 stories tall, and half a million gallons of propellant, two and a quarter million pounds of thrust, and the most metal of all rockets setting itself on fire before it goes to space. So retiring it is uh, obviously the future, moving to Vulcan, a, a less expensive, higher performance rocket, but still sad. You know, it, it is an honor for us to serve these missions. Um, you know, we have done three quarters, I think, of the missions for NRO, and we're humbled by that trust. And of course, this really is, in a way, your rocket. This will be the 16th flight. All but four of those have been for the NRO because of its unique capabilities. And so we are looking for a successful mission and a, you know, a great retirement of an amazing vehicle. That final launch of a Delta IV heavy rocket on the NROL-70 mission did go to plan. It also brought an end to the nearly quarter century era of ULA launches from Slick 37. But as the Delta IV chapter ends, the Starship chapter is on the verge of beginning. Reporting from Merritt Island in Florida, Will Robinson Smith for Spaceflight Now.